follow-up that they've done since this happened and whether they intend on instituting new rules to prevent this from happening again? No. <laughs> uh, I would, uh, David is probably the person who, I, if there's anything any color, David might have it. Um, but uh, this is, is one of those incidents where the a Gaming Inspection Coordination Bureau, the DICJ, uh, tends to take a very quiet approach and deal with the problem behind closed doors rather than telegraph to everyone what they intend to do. Uh, it's a typical approach by them in, and in actually in many cases probably the, the correct approach, but we're still waiting for an official response to be publicly released by them, I think. Okay, are there any questions that anyone has burning at the moment? Yes. Microphone? Do we have a Rogan mic at all? Or? No. I, I can shout. Yeah, shout, please. If, if Japan opens up as a market, uh, does it pose any kind of a threat to Macau, or is the, is the pent up demand from Macau so big um, that there'll be no impact whatsoever? I, I, I don't believe it's a threat at all. I think the pent up demand here, and also that if you, if you look at where the customers, to Macau are coming from. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, in a, in a smaller way, the Philippines, I mean, the Philippines didn't have an impact, a noticeable impact on uh, Macau. Um, you know, and, and they are generating three billion, two and a half, two and a half billion of, of, of revenue. You know, not, not, not great, but still, you know, very little sort of impact. Um, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think so. But the other thing there is that, is that I think it's fairly, agreed upon that Japan would be a domestically driven market. Um, it would not need uh, 